It's Brent with Likens Motorsports. <clears throat> I remember that after I got both heads on that I had not verified top dead center on my balancer. So the balancer is installed. The marks were really, really faint. And I was able to use um, <clears throat> my dual uh, dial indicator bridge to check top dead center. And then I re-verified that with a piston stop and found out that the balancer was four degrees off. So did a little pointer adjustment and got it on zero and also made a few marks on the balancer. I haven't, uh, I don't know if I'm gonna leave it like that or not. Um, hate to use timing tape on this stuff. It sticks out like a sore thumb, but I guess so does those big white marks. Um, could always, I could have marked top dead center and used a dial back light at the dyno, but sometimes people don't have dial back timing lights. And uh, I've seen a lot of people get in trouble with dial back timing lights. So we'll just leave it like that probably. I'm gonna get my head back on here and um, we're going to look at rocker arm geometry and measure for our push rods. And um, someone asked um, how I was going to do all this with a hydraulic roller lifter. Well, there's two ways you can go about checking um, push rod length and uh, setting up your geometry with a hydraulic roller lifter. I'm gonna try to show you both of those. Um, the first is really, really easy. It's just essentially modifying the lifter that you're gonna use by either welding uh, the push rod cup to the top or um, taking the lifter apart and shimming it up so that it can't go down. Uh, the second is using a solid lifter and uh, checking where your poly lock position is on the rocker arm and then don't change that poly lock position. Swap your lifters out to the lifter you're gonna use and then measure your push rod length. So we're going to uh, check both of them out. And I'll attempt to show you how to do both, but uh, nothing will get done if I stand here jawing. So let's get to work. So we're gonna be using Comp Cam's uh, Ultra Pro XD rocker arms. These are steel rocker arms. They can take a ton of spring load, um, but they're steel, so they're not as, as large. Aluminum rocker arms are typically bigger because they need more, more material to be more, more strong, um, which also means we're gonna have a ton of room in between our push rod and our rocker arm fulcrum, which is where uh, we were having trouble with the, uh, the regular comp cams uh, rocker arms I was trying last week. So um, we're gonna see where we are with this rocker arm and um, I've kind of got just a, a, a real push rod that's, uh, I keep lengths, uh, boxes of different lengths of push rods. So I'll pull this one out and it looked pretty close. I'm gonna see where I am and check lift at the valve with it to see uh, where we are as far as pattern and lift at the valve. And then once we establish that, we can start looking at our uh, lifters that we're gonna use for the real setup. All right, we're gonna give this a shot. I should have about 628 thousandths lift at the valve. So we'll see what happens here. One, two, three, four, five, six, ten, six, fifteen. So um, our geometry probably is not correct. Um, we do have plenty of space though between the uh, push rod and the rocker arm body, which is really good. So I'm gonna get this back to where we started. Return to zero, that's good. So I'm gonna get this taken apart and look at the pattern on the valve tip. Okay, so there's our pattern. It's near the center, but it's kind of wide. Um, I will tell you from experience on using these, the aluminum rocker arm 
uh, Rocker Arms from Comp usually do a little bit better of uh, giving us a narrow pattern, but the steel Rocker Arms give us uh, a lot more clearance. So um, what I'm going to do now, um, we're going to look at the Rocker Arm mid lift and see what kind of geometry that we have. All right, so we're supposed to have 628 thereabouts. Um, we're going to stop it at uh, about 314 and see where the rocker arm position is in relation to the valve, valve stem. One, two, three, ten. So there's 315. I'm going to take you out of the tripod right here. So. What we're looking for is if we were to draw an imaginary line through the fulcrum to the roller tip and compare it to the valve, you should have a right angle. We do not have a right angle. So um, that tells me that the push rod needs to be longer um, by a little bit. So I'm gonna change that and see what happens. Okay, so here's a hundred thousandths longer than where we were. Not much better. Although, we'll see what we get at the valve here. 400, 500, 610, 20, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. So, we're getting the the amount of lift that we're supposed to get. Um, at this point, uh, we're gonna take this apart and just see what our pattern looks like. If our pattern's narrow, then we may just leave it alone. Get this out of the way. It's not bad at all. So in, in past videos, I have, uh, I've kind of made the comparison um, on, on which methods to use to determine your rocker arm geometry. Sometimes the mid lift uh, just doesn't work that well. Sometimes it's just a matter of um, looking for the, the most narrow pattern um, and and seeing how much lift you get at the valve. So I'm gonna record the length of that push rod so we can go back to it. Even though it's a solid lifter, I kinda of wanna keep this flagged in case uh, I have to go back to it in a minute. Just for uh, giggles, I'm gonna lengthen this on out so that we do get the correct mid lift geometry and see what that does to our lift at the valve and see what it does to our pattern. All right, so we got a much longer push rod. We're gonna check it and see where we are at mid lift. So there's one, two, three, about 15. I take you out of the tripod here. pretty close to perpendicular. I'm gonna roll this on over and see what kind of valve lift we get. So four, five, six, 10, 20, 631. So that's dangerously close to, uh, I think 628 or 629 is what we're supposed to get. And uh, we'll, Check our pattern across the valve stem and see what she looks like. Move my dial indicator out of the way. Uh, 
that is really narrow. So we're still, still pretty close to the center of the valve. I'm gonna call that, I'm gonna call that a winner. That's a very narrow pattern. Let me get a set of calipers. Measure this baby. So about 60 thousandths is what we're showing. Looks more narrow than that. Um, but it's hard to hold the phone and measure and look and everything at the same time. So we've got a narrow pattern near the center of the valve stem. Um, I'm pretty pleased with that. Now we just have to translate it to um, a hydraulic lifter. So for you guys, um, let me think about how to say this. I have lifters that are welded and I can um, basically do what I just did with that lifter and then just add the amount of preload that I want. But, uh, and the reason we're doing this is because not all lifters have the same push rod seat height. Okay. So Morel lifters have their own comp has their own. Um, I've got a modified Ford racing lifter in there. So all of these are different. That's why you need to check with the lift lifter that you're going to use. What I can do though, is I can put all this back together. I can um, leave my poly lock position where it is because that gives me a stop that the rocker arm won't go past. And I could move this push rod, I can screw it down, move it out of the way. Then I can rotate my rocker arm out of the way, slide this out, slide the push rod or slide that other lifter in do my push rod, do my rocker arm. All right, so we're bumping onto the end of that and I'm looking at uh, when I pulled the poly lock off, uh, just to check things out, I didn't have a lot of engagement on the poly lock. These are 7 16 studs, so you want at least 7 16 of engagement in, uh, in, in my opinion. And um, so what I did was I dialed the push rod in just a little bit and um, that gives me about 7 16 of poly lock engagement and it'll be just a little bit more when we add some preload to it but here's the pattern still very narrow still near the center of the valve stem and um, I'm getting in the 620s uh, for for lift at the valve so uh, we are in good shape and this is just something that you have to look at and make the uh, determination based off of everything all the data that you have um, what this looks like what the pattern looks like if your push rod touches your rocker arm um, how much lift you're getting at the valve so what I can do is put this back on here Tighten up my poly lock until it bottoms out. And then I can screw my push rod link checker in all the way. That moves that out of the way. I can pull my push rod out now. And I can pull my lifters out. And what I can do now is I can slide my Morel hydraulic roller lifters in here. I can put my push rod back in and I can dial my push rod back out um, until it makes everything tighten up, if that makes sense. So we're not moving our poly lock position. This rocker arm can float, it can do whatever it needs to do, but it can't go any further than that. So I'm gonna get that in there and um, may have to switch length checkers but um, get that dialed in there and then measure your push rod and then add um, a half a turn which would be uh, about 25 or 30 thousandths for for lift or preload 
And we've got our morale lifters in here and got our rocker arm seated back again. And I can't do it with one hand, but I can extend this length checker back out until it takes up the slack uh, and then measure it. Okay, excuse the messy shop bench. It seems like you have to drag every tool possible out to work on this stuff, but here's what I measured at 7920. We're gonna call that 7925. Most push rod manufacturers like if you're in a 25 thousandths increment. So we're gonna change that to a 7925. Our threads on our rocker arm stud are 50 thousandths between uh, 50 thousandths pitch from, from thread to thread. So we usually run a um, 25, 30 thousandths preload on the small block stuff. Uh, half of a half turn on a 50 thousandths, you know, thread pitch would be 25. So I'm gonna add 25 thousandths to this. So we're gonna be at 7, 950 for our intake side. And I'm gonna check it with the exhaust side and see if uh, see if everything jives. All right, so here's the other way to do it. This is a Morel lifter and I just bought a pair and ground out. The link bars are held on by um, um, kind of a, a pin they drive in and then they uh, hit it from the other side so that the link bar can't come off. So if you remove the link, uh, link bar and the pin, you can take that circ clip out, dump all the guts out of it, and stack it full of washers or a machine spacer or whatever, just tall enough that you cannot move the push rod seat. And it's up against the circ clip, as you can see. So what I can do is I can use this in lieu of um, a solid roller lifter. It's essentially the same, but the push rod seat is in the right spot. So now I can do all the things that I've done so far. I can check piston and valve clearance with this if I wanted to. Um, I can check valve lift if I wanted to. Uh, most importantly, I can get my push rod length with, with the lifter that I'm going to be using. So, um, and since it's solid, um, keep in mind now that different lifters, the push rod seat is in different spots. Those solid roller lifters that I was using a minute ago, the push rod seat is was way up here on on one of them and further below than, than this lifter on the other lifter. So um, it's good that I have this. I can put my push rod in, my rocker arm in, and I can roll the engine over and check for clearance in my push rod hole. All right, so we got our exhaust side done. So I did the intake side, showing you guys one method with um, transferring lifters and adjusting your push rod length checker and that sort of thing. I did this side with a modified lifter. So you can do it whichever way you want. Um, I did find out that I'm gonna have uh, two different lengths of push rods um, by about, I think, 75 thousandths. So I'll get those ordered and uh, we'll be well on our way. Got our water pump on, it's a new, brand new water pump. And um, everything is, is moving in the right way. I checked our intake manifold last night with the gaskets, the ports line up great. But when I set the intake on, uh, on its carburetor flange and used my BHJ fixture, I could see daylight in between one side. So it'll just need just a touch up on the flanges to make sure that it won't leak. Um, and seal up really good, but uh, other than that, we are we are rolling on, and uh, I expect to um, have this thing buttoned up in a week or so, and uh, we'll be good to go. Thank you guys for watching this one. Appreciate uh, appreciate all the comments and uh, everything that you guys have been saying, and I hope some of this will help you out on your build. Talk to you guys later.